Hey there, YouTubers. I know most of you are going to be expecting uh, part two of the clarinetist vocabulary. Well, I haven't forgotten about it. I'm still working on it. Uh, it's a very important presentation, so I'm trying to figure out how to do it exactly right so it'll be of most help to you. Uh, in between uh, uh, the time that I gave this first thing on vocabulary and, uh, and the second and third installments that will, will follow, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about something we're all familiar with, or most of us are familiar with on the clarinet, and that is uh, mouthpiece patches. And I'd like to offer a few considerations and a few ideas uh, that you can try that maybe you hadn't thought of before. So let's get started right now. When you look at a clarinetist mouthpiece, it really tells a whole lot about how they're playing the clarinet, especially if their teeth are really dug into the mouthpiece. You get a lot of teeth marks and stuff. Uh, that's not very good. Uh, that's, uh, of course, what we call biting, and, and we've repeatedly talked about uh, the evils of biting in these videos. We don't need to go into that right now, but I'll say that getting a mouthpiece patch, uh, which is a lot of that's a thing a lot of clarinet players do to protect their mouthpiece doesn't really solve any problems. Uh, maybe it just keeps your mouthpiece from being destroyed. But that's a very bad reason for getting a mouthpiece patch. Uh, protecting the mouthpiece, yet I think a lot of clarinetists think, well, that's what I'll do. I'll just get a mouthpiece patch and that'll protect my mouthpiece and keep it from being dug into and, and scratched up even more uh, than I normally do it. So, uh, good, that's the job of the mouthpiece patch. Well, I submit to you that's, that's uh, uh, a rather inferior uh, use of the mouthpiece patch. Uh, to my mind, you know uh, that in, in the pedagogy that I've offered on double lip playing, uh, I've recommended that uh, clarinet players control the reed by snugging or uh, lifting the, the, uh, the mouthpiece so that it snugs against the lips. Uh, and uh, that's the way you control the reed as opposed to biting and clamping in with the jaw. Well, I've found that the, mouth, that the uh, mouthpiece patch is very useful in actually facilitating that technique. Now, mouthpieces, the surfaces are very slick, so if you try to snug uh, a slick surface in your mouth, whether your teeth are on the mouthpiece or the upper lip is on the mouthpiece, um, it, you're not going to get much traction, you're not going to get much resistance, uh, and the resistance is what you really need to, to help you uh, get that uh, good, uh, good friction to control the reed. So what I recommend uh, is uh, using a mouthpiece patch. Now I know there are lots of different kinds of mouthpiece patches. I remember when I was a student uh, that we didn't have commercial mouthpiece patches. We used to cut them out uh, by hand uh, out of uh, rubber inner tubes and stuff like that and uh, they worked mm, sort of so-so, uh, but uh, one of the nice things about them is that they did have a little bit of texture, and so uh, that really helped in facilitating this technique of lifting. Now, there's some slick mouthpieces on the, uh, on the market, or I mean slick mouthpiece patches, and uh, I'm not sure, you know, just uh, how effective those things are, and also very thin mouthpiece patches are on the market too. And uh, again, uh, I'm not sure how much uh, uh, protection those, uh, those mouthpiece patches afford a mouthpiece, and they certainly don't facilitate this uh, proper technique of snugging to control the reed rather than biting. So what I recommend is a somewhat thicker mouthpiece patch and one that has some texture. Uh, take a look, for instance, to the mouthpiece patch uh, in the uh, photograph here. As you can see, uh, it's kind of a dull texture. It's rubberized. This is the mouthpiece patch that we sell at, at Ridden Air Clarinet Products. And uh, it has a very good, uh, very good friction qualities and really helps you snug a lot, plus it's thick. And uh, besides, the, besides the, uh, the texture and stuff, the thickness is something to note. And I'd like to talk about it next. A thick mouthpiece patch can really do a great, th a great deal of things besides just protect the mouthpiece. For instance, if you'll notice in that photograph, let's put that photograph up again, 
you'll see that uh, that my mouthpiece is double patched. I actually have two mouthpiece patches and I run them pretty close up to the tip of the mouthpiece. Well, why do I do that? I do that for two reasons. Uh, and neither one of them has to do with protecting the mouthpiece. They actually have a lot to do with the production of the sound, the response, uh, and the tone quality itself. Uh, I know that most clarinet players uh, uh, struggle very hard to, to, to make sure that the notes above the staff, immediately above the staff, have the proper depth. And one of the reasons that they don't have the proper depth is because there's not enough working resistance up there. Well, you know, if you take the patch, whether it's a single patch or a double patch, and you run it up very close to the tip of the mouthpiece, it actually provides some needed resistance that you notice more when you get above the staff than any other time. So it helps round out the sound and give you that nice cushion uh, for notes up there that will facilitate your playing legato from long pipe to short pipe and keep the sounds rounder and to have a little more stability and substance when you go up there. So that, the, that thickness up there at the tip of the mouthpiece really helps, uh, helps uh, quite a bit. Now, there's one other thing that, um, that I really like about having the double patch. And by the way, I'm, I'm a double lip player. So that means that, uh, that I actually uh, am triply cushion, cushioning uh, uh, up there on the mouthpiece. I've got two uh, thicknesses of patches and then this upper lip. But when you add that thickness, it actually changes the relationship of the airstream and the tip of the reed. And what I find is when I lower uh, the reed, uh, that it somehow puts the reed right in a sweet spot uh, in terms of uh, the way the airflow, uh, the way I tend to use the airflow, and it uh, makes the response uh, much quicker, much uh, more secure, and it uh, also uh, helps purify the sound. So uh, those are some really positive results. So I know most people, when they put a patch on the mouthpiece, they're just trying to protect their mouthpiece and um, perhaps make it feel a little more comfortable in their mouth. But uh, if you add that texture, uh, then it'll help you uh, do the correct thing in terms of uh, tone production mechanics with the snugging. And then if you experiment with, the, with thickness and, and placement, I think you'll find some other significant improvements there along uh, with uh, just uh, simply protecting the mouthpiece. So I offer these things for you. They've worked for great for me, and I found that they work great for my students. And uh, so uh, there's no reason uh, that you couldn't find some positive stuff. But again, uh, uh, probably just you know incre incremental adjustments and stuff, those are things that are gonna have to be individually figured out. But I think the principle should be fairly ubiquitous, and I hope you benefit from it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully next time I'll have a good presentation on part two of the clarinetist vocabulary. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. Drop by and see us. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, we always love to hear from you. Got any questions? Let us know. Just don't get personal. Woo! <laughs>